there, I'm pretty sure. No, ah. Occupy Thrones will be first pick here. We are seeing something slightly different than what we've seen in the past. The Fermi's ban coming in. Now, with this being a best of three, you kind of got to pull some of those cards out quick. You don't want to hold too many blows. You are in the lower bracket. Mm. Everything's on the line, but low ye? I think we saw her once in the group stages, if yep. I remember right. Uh, you know, that popped up. But again, it's not something that you're used to seeing, right? I, at least banned out here. But this just highlights how, you know, with teams from other regions and everything else, how their play styles can differ, how it can vary. And still, with it being a dire situation for you where you basically have one life here that matters, this is the time where you pull out those tricks. This is the time where you pull out that strategy that might be your comfort that you're used to playing here, where, again, we've already seen kind of a trend established for M4's meta, but I mean, aside from that Wan Wan ban, Fairness once in a while, but the Lu, Lu Yi being banned is not something typical. On the other side, though, Malvinas taking out the carry, too, the carry, the joy, the glue. These are heroes that have just been all over the place, especially that carry. Well, personally for me, I'm just hoping to see a different blue side starter here. I'm tired of the eaves, I'm tired of the carries. I want to see something else. First pick something exciting and is uh -oh. that is this uh -oh. the excitement that I'm getting? Did, did <laughs> I jinx it? Come on, lock it in. There we go. It's going to be Kaja first picked on the blue side for Occupy Thrones. Now, it's not the Franco that we wanted to see. It is the Kaja again, which we still like. And it's just well-rounded. It's flexible. Of course, I feel like we've seen a lot more Rome Kaja. But if you have to, you can move it around now. Malvina's Gaming going to respond by picking up the typical Yeev, and they still have something else to follow. Do they go into a gold or a mid or a jungle here? I think they could possibly, we see them pick up the XP lane. Uh, that might be a viable option, whether you go to Lapu Lapu. Yu Zhang has been highly contested as well. Uh, you still have actually quite a bit of options, but even going back on the first pick, the priority pick for the Kaja, it, I think it's... It's very, the value's there just because you have an on-demand targeted ultimate, right? It's actually, okay. And you can play around that because, again, this is a team that had very high average kills from the group stage despite not being able to win a game. So, Kaja is a great start to hopefully taking this match number one, this game number one here. The Grok pick to, to complement the Eve is there. We still don't know 100% how this is going to be played exactly, but... Still, with the next couple picks from Occupy Thrones, yes. Valentina so comes out here and looking to take the real world manipulation or the wild charge possibly. And also, there's the Lapu Lapu being locked in. Personally, I'm taking a face value, right? I'm seeing the Brock. Oh, uh, how are we going to face check brushes? Well, they, they have a Kaja, so Brock just seems like a very natural answer for the time being. It might prove very vital later on because both sides haven't really shown what their gold laner is going to be. The Lapu Lapu, again, something that I would have expected Malvinas even to pick up within the first rotation yeah. other than the Brock. Rather interesting for me, but the Valentina is just always good into, uh, in specifically against the Eve matchup later on into the game. It is a little rough in the Your laning phase, though. Most, uh, oh, oh, I like it. Ranger, that's a second pick, but it does hold a... Uh, 100% win rate right now. So, I mean, if, if it's been working, maybe we will slowly start to see some more of this. The thing is, is at this point, I think they do, now with that being a damage dealer and not going your typical bulky jungler or even assassin jungler, I feel like he is a pretty easy target. If the side of Occupy Thrones wants to pick up something, you know, like the Ling or an assassin. Yeah, the fact that they bent out the Yuzong here I'm guessing they could set up for something. Uh, they could set up for, you know, a shorter range marksman. There, there's a good chance that he just want to eliminate as many EXP landers because it feels like it's pretty, well, stable, or at the very least, the lows, rolls are locked in. But let's not forget that the Brock can actually go into the EXP lane, and I hope that Occupy Thrones keep that in mind. But let's have a look at a quote coming in from Dragon, who is the ranked first in damage dealt shared at 26.9% amongst all EXP laners here in M4. So basically what that means is he likes to be scrappy, right? He likes to be in all those fights because honestly, if you look at XP laners, again, we're highlighting them even from yesterday or actually throughout the entire M4 tournament, they're, they kind of play different two styles. It's either you're more focused on splitting those lanes, putting pressure around the map, or you really like to just be in the fight time after time and Dragon's one of those, right? I mean, there's a couple people that come on the top of your head when you're thinking about exactly who those people are, but Dragon being one of them and having that statistic there pretty much shows he likes to be in the action, and at the same time, that still wonders, 
is this the Grok going in his hands? Because now we've seen it in the Rome, we've seen it in XP lane, and still, how does he want to play with that? Because Weapon Mastery's been working pretty great, especially when you're looking for those big setups. And again, that perfectly goes with his playstyle. Well, I think it's a matter of preference, right? It's like whether or not you want to have those like initial big damage, uh, big damage catches when you have high and dry, or whether you want to scale even harder with the Weapon Master. And now with picks already coming Ooh. through so fast, Lolita already locked in for the side of Malvinas Gaming, but coming back to Octopi Thrones, the family has been open up for a very long time. So again, that's why you can see the smiles coming in. They know, hey, there's no way you can really lock us down anymore. Yeah, but they could still, or no, they've already got the Lolita, you're right, and it's going to be fair. I was just thinking, well, you can still flex the Grog, but no, they've already flexed the Grog. Lolita will be in the mid, and yes, when I saw that Cho get banned out by the side of Occupy Thrones, I was like, oh, we're getting an Assassin here. We're definitely getting something highly mobile, highly move, highly moving, and this could definitely be the death sentence for Malvinas with that pick. The thing is, he's for the side of Malvinas, I'm trying to think if there's anything they could pick here to possibly lock that down. They do still need a gold lane. No, yeah, they still need a gold laner. Maybe a gold lane saber. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, we could see something surprising here, uh, especially because you have the Granger into the jungle already. It's going to be the Lunox. So you were asking about it earlier in the previous series. Now we're going to see it. I mean, you have the Brilliance to get away. You know, if you do get those ganks, you're a bit maybe less vulnerable than other gold laners, but you still don't have the lockdown for the Fanny. I was thinking maybe a Moskov, you guys were saying Saber, something to bring that down, so I'm a little iffy about it. Honestly, it really, at the highest level, you expect a Grok to be able to kind of lock off particular angles and kind of funnel Fanny into a death trap, right? That's what we should expect to see uh, from this game, but I don't know, it's still hard. Fanny is a really creative hero, and it's a dynamic way of getting in and out of fights with the steel cables. You have so much more flexibility than so many of your opponents out there. Yeah, I think, uh, again, you make good points. It really just comes down to how to utilize the Grok. You're going to have to shut down that Fanny. Now, even, I believe the Kufra was open, so I would have liked to possibly even see a Kufra, but Lolita is still a great option. With that being Five said, seconds. it's so time to roll into a game of our final best of three here today. Are you ready? Because it is Occupy Thrones up against Malvinas Gaming. All right, so taking a look at the emblems real quick there. He is running the high and dry on that Grok, so might be looking to even possibly get some early kills, or they're going to be focusing on the side lanes even, right? And finding pickoffs to garner them that lead with this lineup they have. Also, with Prince Fran being on this Granger jungle, when it has been picked, running this killing spree, it has run rampant before. But you're working against Leo here on this Fanny, so this is going to be still a quite the job cut out for Prince Fran specifically. But like we highlighted earlier on, he's done it before. Oh, oh Dragon taking a bit of damage here. This is what I was worried about. Leo trying to come in. Morrow going to poke him in, and Dragon's going to be forced to go back to base here. Oh, interesting. He decides to go back to base because it's the fastest way to actually get to his orange buff side, but it does mean that Prince Fran has an opportunity to actually catch up and now is out-leveling Leo by one. And now with a little wander, they can start moving towards the bottom side. Most definitely. Fury looking for something. I like the aggression from both teams here. No one too scared to get in the other team's face. At first, I was a little worried the way Morrow was playing. I thought it was going to give Prince Fran a lot of of trouble, but Malvina's Gaming answering back. Yeah, I mean, this is the typical kind of process, right? All this, the farming, the poking back and forth until the first turtle of the game. Morrow, though. Oh, Morrow taking a lot of damage. Prince Fran looking for something there, but still unable to find it. I think he would have. He had his ult, right? He could have 100% secured the kill on that one, but here comes oh. Leo! Here comes Leo! I mean, what else can you say about that? You can see it coming, the steel cables, and then the doom is near. I mean, that's why you, when you have a fanny across from you, you really don't want to be like less, you don't want to be at a fourth of health, right? Especially this early on, you know the burst is going to be there already. So this is already an advantage. Dragon going to get poked again. I'm trying to set up here. Ooh, Hulk comes in with the bravest fighter. Dragon uses the wild charge. This is a real world manipulation. Both go down. <gasps> But the stun does come on to Prince Fran. Now comes the Destinata. Does oh. not connect, but Leo will connect. Prince Fran forces that away, but he's not going to be able to make it. Leo picks up another kill, putting him at two and zero. Things are looking so good 
four Occupy Thrones. They have a really good idea of what they want to do against Malvinus Gaming. And unfortunately for Prince Fan, I think he's a little too hesitant on his on his ultimate his ult? Yeah. He should be using it more often to initiate fights to get the initial slow. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think too. And you can already see, right, Leo's off to a great start here. And I feel like if you didn't catch it during the draft, that's why he was clapping, right? He locked in this hero of his, that he loves the Fanny here. So, and it's already off to the 2-0 and start. Itemization-wise too, everybody's still working on that first a big item of theirs. But with this gold lead going in favor of Occupy Thrones, they're in a great position here, especially again, Morrow on this Kaja has Flicker in just a couple seconds here. Might be looking for a Divine Judgment play if he can find one. Oh, I might. I think he might do it right here onto Sepe. It looks kind of good, but no, he's not going to take the angle. And I think, you know, Occupy Thrones at this stage of the game generally is going to be thinking about, like, how do we snowball out of control? Because if we're talking about scaling, Malvinus Gaming, they've got some really scary heroes on their side. Yeah, but so does Occupy Thrones with uh, Gato on this um, on this quad. We know there's some possibilities, some insurance for the late game, along with the sustainability that you get from that uh, from that Kaja. I mean, I'm, I'm a little worried. It's already a very bad start, but here comes the Divine Judgment. Steph may go down. Gato comes in with the Blazing Duet. Harley trying to do something, wow. but it gets stunned down. This could be bad. Steph, they picked up. Leo, gonna find that kill. In comes the Bravest Fighter on to Harley, forced to go back under that tower, and Occupied Thrones is breaking down Malvinus. See, that's the frustrating thing when, with Granger, right? It was Fury one hit away, but you just couldn't angle enough to get it, and now on the bottom side, they're gonna clear that out. Still, I think a big question is, where does this Lunox fit? How does it go along with the rest of the game here, right? Joel Crew having the mystery shop here, going to be working towards building those items as fast as possible because that burst damage, especially from the Chaos Bolt, is obviously pretty scary even at this point in the game. Dragon, though, oh gonna just should be just fine. Going to have to recover, but still, you don't want to be low health here, especially with a Fanny across from you. And this should set up Occupy Thrones, possibly for another turtle. I think for now they're definitely going to get the turtle, but I feel like it. if this game continues in the direction that I think it's going and looking at the game status of how the position of Occupy Thrones is right now, it's going to spiral out of control. Leo, he's already previously two levels ahead of Prince Fran, not only, well, still two levels. He needs to start pushing into the enemy jungle and continuously pulling attention to himself so that the laners can do their job. Lapu is already controlling the Grok. We look down bot side, they're already setting up for a potential one-shot kill with a Divine Judgment onto this Lunox. I mean, even looking at the items, right, you have Joku finally getting that Clock of Destiny locked in here. A couple more items. Pretty much at this point, everybody has that first crucial one. A lot of Blades of Hepsis as well across the board. But still, how does that transition to these early team fights, these early skirmishes, especially with Turtles? I mean, at this point, you're kind of just giving it up if you're Malvinus Gaming. And now here on the bottom side, oh, there it is. Divine Judgment on a Joel Crew. We saw it, but they did it. Now the Immobilize does land on a Fury, oh. but Leo Ooh. finds it. Prince Fran goes down. 4-0-0. Zero and zero. Leo may still want more. Trying to cable around. Morrow going to hide out in this Fry Bush. This is looking rough with a 3K cold lead going to the side of OT. Oh, uh, I feel like... Oh, wait. Not another on. one. Not, not another one. Okay, he, he's going to get out here. I, I don't think it would have been another one. I, I don't think anybody has enough damage to really put the play out here. But Maro completely disrespecting the, uh, the spacing on purpose. And he knows where everybody is on the map. I mean, they're still going out of here, right? Maro in complete control. Top side, though. Dragon going to get taken down pretty easily. Leo's just unleashing. I mean, it, this is just a, a Leo show in the jungle. But still, you complement it so well once again with Morrow on the Kaja here. And you're wondering, you know, we haven't seen Franco much. Well, that's because there's Kaja. It's on demand targets. Oh, but the Destinata does land on Morrow, finally. Arlay picking something up. Leo trying to find one of his own, though. Moves in, but it's a little bit too much more than he can chew. But now with the turtle up, Steffi. Gonna maybe try to zone this away. Fury getting a couple pokes in. Hulk is here as well, but I think we're at now a bit of a standstill. Yeah, I don't think this is good for OT at all. Right now, Fanny doesn't have her purple buff. She needs to go back, pick it up, and then come back in. Malvinus Gaming are unaware of this, or I didn't notice that Leo only had the orange buff at that point of time. They technically could set up, and yes, they are hovering ready in flank positions to get rid of somebody. Ooh, and 
look at them. They're going to come on to Hulk. Oh. That's the target. Mission completed. Hulk goes down. They this could be give Malvinus a little bit of a chance. But wait, Prince Han is the first one to fall. Leo now looking for the next one. The Numenon Blast Ooh. lands down. And the damage is in. Brilliant's forced to come out just to get away. But Dragon still falls oh. tomorrow. Taking a bit of damage. But Leo's on the hunt. He wants one. He wants two. But he just can't find it. Back to the reset for the turtle. Man, that, I mean, so this is frustrating if you're Prince Fran because, what, in one to two seconds, you're just deleted? I, I mean, it's so hard to even play around that because you literally have a one dash on this Granger here. And especially with the Malefic Roar being picked up by Leo, he, this is I mean, seven to zero, right? He's just massive in this game so far. They might even have just free control on this Lord. At this point, Malvinus Gaming, yes, you saw the burst from Joel Crew. It's obviously there, has that genius wand. Pairs up really well with Harley here, but still, I think Harley, he needs to lock in that Ice Queen. Yeah, wait a second. Will oh. comes on, that's the Nauta lands. Yuri 77 will go down along with Mauro. This could give Malvinas a chance over wow. this Lord. Yeah, this is a huge swing, honestly, but wait. Leo, uh -oh. don't, Leo, uh -oh. don't do it. Uh, Leo wants to come in, trying to find the moment. Gato comes in with the Blaze duet. Harley and Steffi are melted down, but Hulk is here with the Bravest Fighter, trying to lock on, but they're on the chase, and Hulk goes down. Two for zero trade currently. Gato forced to back off, but Malvinas Gaming know their health bars are low, and Leo's still in the field, so we're going to wait to get this Lord. That took discipline. I mean, you saw the Chaos Bolt was committed from Joel Crew. They whittled down the Lord, what, to less than half health? And they still pulled off Prince Fran, deciding to go on the members of Occupy Throne. Speaking of Spin Fran, almost gets caught down. Gato finds it. Numenon Blast does come down, lands on to Fury, but now they're out of the real world manipulation. Oh, wait a second, big flicker. Dragon finds his connection, and Fury 77 goes down. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a bloodbath. Oh my goodness, Dragon, the difference maker right now. And I, I get where you're coming at. It does take a lot of discipline to pull back. I think Occupy Thrones made a smart decision of throwing bodies to actually try and chunk Malvinas Gaming as much as they can to get them off of that Lord. Their lead, their 3k lead, now only cutting down to a 2k lead. Oh, potential dive down bot side though. Oh, tries to get it off, but gets stunned. Wait a second, Morrow is here to help out, but wait, that's a little bit too much. Force to back off, but he does save Hulk. I mean, these these are great moments for Malvinus Gaming. Don't get me wrong, right? Even itemization-wise, they're finally getting some of the items they need there. Like I mentioned, Harley's got the Ice Queen wand now. Dragon picking up BOD here. But still, all that happened, they don't have any turrets down, guys. They need to get space on the map here. And that's why you see them struggling so much to actually get this Lord. It was a four, about a 4K gold lead for Occupy Thrones at one point, but they're still going for picks here. They're still trying to get kills because they know we don't have this uh, objective control that we need despite us winning some of these skirmishes. And even Your Occupy Thrones doing a destroyed. great job at just keeping them there. Oh, this bad dragon will get picked off played. and that is huge. Steffi just wastes the Numenon Blast. That is a lot of material, a man and ult down. Malvina's gaming gonna be forced to back off here. Oh, I mean, Steffi had the right idea. He wanted to flicker in, but they're about to lose the mid tier too. Leo getting away with too much, way too much. And Malvina's gaming, honestly, you can't stop him at this point. The snowball is huge for Leo. He just oh. needs to convert into a lead. Oh, my oh Destinata does come in, lands on tomorrow, but still not enough damage. Lord, wait a second, conceal play. Does Steffi have something up his sleeve? Joel, oh. with the flicker in. Yes, lots of damage. Fury 77 goes down. Joel Crew wants to find Morrow. He finds him, two down. Lord down to about 20%. Hulk in the back line, focusing on to the rest, but he will fall next. Leo, though, does find Prince Brand. Make that a double for Gato. It's three to two, but the Lord goes to OT. The battle continues. Leo goes down, and now it's Gato all alone. I don't know if that's a fair trade for OT. You even see Leo, right, on the camera. He goes in, gets the retribution off, throws his hands up. Was it worth it? That's still the question here. Now, finally, Malvinas Gaming out of that whole trade. They're finally going to get a couple turrets in the Tier 1, get a little bit of space to work with here. Itemization-wise, too, it's now 
at least they're catching up, right? Occupy Throne still holding on, but Gato's gonna get even scarier. He's already got those three core items for this Claude here, also running the Vengeance. So Malvinus Gaming, as the game goes on, they're really gonna have to be careful on how they pick these fights, because again, you're relying on Dragon to find that Holy Mary, wild charge setup if he can, but still the interaction, you're also relying on Joel through with Harley. They gotta work on this Lord, and get it cleared up, get a reset going here, and try to find picks here. I'm actually on the opposite opinion. I think Malvinas Gaming would say, all right, take what you want. As long as we're not too far apart and we hit critical mass, we've got a really good opportunity to turn this around because that's the power of Lunox, who just scales to almost infinity here and makes it really difficult for Gato, who has to take vengeance just to keep himself alive oh. against... Whoa. No way. <laughs> just when we thought Leo fell off, the damage is still there at 13 minutes. Okay, Hold bit on. of a breather there. Hulk should be able to get out, but yeah, Joel Cruel now with four full items. Gato, he's got to be really careful. See, that's the thing that, that's kind of scary though with if you're Malvinus Gaming is whether it's Leo, whether it's Morrow, there's so much potential them to find anybody from Malvinus Gaming and make it a numbers advantage, right? The pickoff potential is huge because if there was even follow-up from that, Leo got, the, Leo got Prince Fran down to one HP pretty much. And even if you take Prince Fran out, hold on. We're speaking of freaking someone off. Dragon will go down. Steffi wants to find it. That's not a does not connect to anyone, though. Neither does that Numenon Blast. Harley brings it out. But wait a second, the response. Oh, oh man, Numenon Blast. And Malvin is gaming his wife. Nothing but Harley left. That was a huge response for Fury. Can we get a, can we get a replay on that? We need a replay. What fancy footwork, steel cables oh. coming up, man. Harley is gone. We all know it was happening. And right, wait, Harley survives and they already sacrificed one. But this game should be done for. Maybe I don't know, minions. Harley doesn't have to. Well, no, oh, they do they have the do. ult. They're gonna be able to stop it. Maybe wipe this out. Hulk trying to find it, the base. Oh. Take a lot of damage, Dragon comes out. The response is there. And now OT is on the run. This is going a little bit longer, ladies and gentlemen. Oh no! I mean, it started with Leo cabling into his death, and unfortunately, everything was clear there with Harley, and now the Lord is up here. Is Malvinus Gaming gonna turn this game around? I don't know, this Lord should be able to go to them, and with the death counters being so lot long, they're gonna be able to reclaim the map position. It was supposed to be over, but Malvinus Gaming is still in the throw. I can't believe that just happened. I, I am at loss for words at this point, and if Occupy Thrones lose this game, a lot of uncomfortable looks are going to be shown at Leo for what he did. Oh boy. Let's see how this is going to go because this is the point of time where my Venus Gaming is really going to bite back. The Granger, he finally has a decent number of items. Most importantly, we're looking at Joel Cruel, who's got everything yep. down. Just needs some magic penetration, and any Athena shields are not going to matter. Oh, here comes a concealed play, oh. though. Morrow's going to get stunned up with the wild charge. Human on Blast comes in. Oh. Steffi gets the stun. Hulk brought down to about 30%. Fairy and Morrow are already gone. Leo. Connection on the Lord. This could be bad. Wait, Wait a second. Back. Leo, Leo. Oh. the base. Occupy Thrones. Leo no. picks it up. No Just when we counted him what? out, the Leo secures the win. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're gonna love that. They're definitely gonna love that, Gideon. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. They have done it for a potential blunder. Leo's like, don't worry, I got you. I'll bring it back by myself. Well done. GG, well played to Occupy Thrones. All part of the plan. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I mean. Only an M4, guys. Only an M4 do we see the plays like that happen. Oh. Leo, that's all I got to say. Leo, Leo. I mean, he had a, let's, let's be honest, he had an amazing game up until that moment. And then just.